Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, on the agenda tonight, we're going to be talking about interpolation. And it's something that I've received a lot of emails about, especially recently, because people don't understand what it is, what it means, and uh, there's good reason for that. I've only just become aware of it myself because of all the messages that I have received. So, I'm going to give you my point of view on interpolation as I see it as somebody that owns my music publishing rights i've got a decent idea of how i think the law works with regard to music but i will also forward this video to scott our lawyer friend of the channel for him to take a look at the definition of interpolation and whether it would actually hold any weight in court or not so we're going to start out with the definition of interpolation and it says in popular music interpolation also called a replayed sample refers to using a melody or portions of a melody often with modified lyrics from a previously recorded song but re-recording the melody instead of directly sampling it interpolation is often used when the artist or label who owns the recording of the music declines to license the sample or if licensing the piece of music is considered too costly so <laughs> we're gonna have some hypothetical situations in this video i can already feel them coming on so you'll see at the top of the page this statement we've got in a box that says this article needs attention from an expert in music i think that's a bit of an understatement the specific problem is, see recent deletion discussion, wiki project music may be able to help recruit an expert, August 2022. So, now my problem with just reading through this paragraph as to defining what it is, they're basically saying that if somebody comes up with something in a musical sense, be it a melody, that is that person's intellectual property and it always has been so when they then register that melody as theirs and it is now copyright they own that so what this is saying is that when somebody doesn't want you to use their song and their melody that they've got within that song and it might even be a guitar riff a particular you know series of notes that make up that riff that is very well known and they don't want that to be repeated so if that happens don't worry just do it yourself and call it interpolation <laughs> which is absolutely crazy because when you have an agreement with someone you need their permission you've got to have an agreement with someone to use their intellectual property and something that they have created and something that they have written in a musical sense in this example so the other point which i love about this is or if licensing the piece of music is considered too costly so it's basically saying okay i want to use your song you know what's the damage going to be how much is it going to cost for me to use your song or to use your melody or to sample a part of your song whatever it may be and the person will say oh it's going to cost you twenty thousand pounds and the person says oh no that's a bit expensive for me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use it anyway but i'm just going to play it you know <laughs> so here we go hypothetical situation number one and we have AI Jack White here just minding his own business and a movie director comes along and says Hey Jack, I'm making a movie and I really want to use a riff, a very well-known riff from one of your songs. Can I use it in my movie please? Jack White says No, because I've seen your movie, I know what it's about and I don't agree with it on an artistic level or a personal level so you're not going to be able to use any of my music my melodies my intellectual property in your movie and that's my final answer so the movie director says ah oh, oh, never mind okay well thanks for your time fast forward to a year later when the movie's released and the opening scene of the movie there's a gang of youths 
on the streets beating up innocent people. And what are they doing? They're singing their chant. And they continue to sing this chant. Now, that's familiar, that series of notes and that melody. What could it possibly be? It can be, of course, Seven Nation Army by Jack White. So Jack White contacts the director and says, What are you doing? Using my riff? And then the director says, Oh no, we're not using your riff. Yeah, it is your riff, but we're singing it. So therefore, we're using it with in interpolation. It's in interpolated. That's what we're doing. And then, of course, Jack White will say, Well, no, that's that's my melody that you're using. And then the director will say, Oh, no, you're mistaken. It is your melody. That is true. But we're singing it. So it means it's now our melody. So we don't have to have an agreement with you. And we don't even have to credit you as coming up with those series of notes because we're singing it. Therefore, it is now ours to do with, you know, however we see fit in the movie. So you start to see the problem that... When a movie is released, say for example, it is controversial and, you know, people don't agree with it on an ethical level and they might think, oh, I'm surprised that Jack White's involved with this, that he's allowed his melody to be used on this movie and therefore he's now in this bracket of being part of this movie. But he has specifically said that he does not want any of his music, his melodies, his intellectual property to be included in this movie in any way. But... The director said, Oh yeah, but interpolation. And just saying that, I mean, <laughs> I thought when I first heard about this, that it was a joke, that it was more of an April Fool's thing. But I thought, well, we're not in April, so what's going on? And then uh, some people linked me to a video that Rick Beato did, uh, where he's talking about it as well. And he goes through different songs that have been described as using this technique or... <laughs> You know, using, you know, or having a song that interpolated an, another song. And he, and he goes through it on Wikipedia, seeing that, you know, these songs aren't giving credit to the people that actually wrote the melody in the first place. I think on that video, actually, there was a song or maybe a couple of songs from Dua Lipa. And she released an album called Future Nostalgia, which was basically a cover album. So she was coming up with songs that were old songs, but, you know, coming up with them and reimagining them her own way, all that kind of stuff. So this is why pretty much every song, you know which song it came from back in the day. But of course, you know, you can say that the younger audience and the younger generation might not know that she's directly just copied and pasted songs from the past to put on a whole album. But to my knowledge, Dua Lipa has credited all of the original writers in her songs and, and on the songs of her album. So I think, yeah, that is all what it should be. It's all above board because that's how it works. That if you want to sample something, yeah, you've got to give that copyright owner their dues. But also, if you just want to use their melody, same thing. They created that. It's their intellectual property. They wrote it. So they own it. So you need to give them recognition for doing that. And you know, they should receive their royalties for however well that particular album does, which of course they do because they are listed. Of course, I think this is a great move as well by Dua Lipa to put out an album that's just going to have great song after great song because you already know they're great songs because they were great songs 30, 40, 50 years ago. So yeah, it, it, I think it was smart in, in that way. So for me, just with this opening paragraph on Wikipedia, I mean, it is so weak trying to just use a word to get around the law and copyright law because just calling it interpolation doesn't make it any different to breaching copyright law and not having an agreement with the actual owner. And then you can't make any money from that piece of music or a melody or effectively intellectual property as it is of that person who, you know, would have registered it years and years and years ago. So. Yeah, this <laughs> opening paragraph, I'm surprised that it's still on Wikipedia, that it hasn't been taken down because I'm pretty sure that Scott, when he takes a look at this, he probably won't believe it either, that they're just calling it a different word. Basically, they're coming up with copyright fraud 
and calling it something else and saying, oh no, it's not copyright fraud, it's interpolation. They say, yeah, but interpolation, the very definition of it is copyright fraud. They say, oh no, but we're calling it a different word, so it can't be. You know, so here we go, hypothetical situation. Number two, somebody goes into somebody else's house and they, oh, I almost said steal there. They pick up something that belongs to the other person and the other person doesn't want them to take it. They say, oi, that's mine. Don't take that out of my house. And the person says, oh no, I'm not taking it. I'm not stealing it. I'm legistifying it. And the person says, what? Says, yeah, no, I'm not stealing it. I'm legistifying it, which means that I'm holding it and I'm going to permanently relocate it in my house. So it's just been legistified. Um, it, it's not stealing. So then when they go to court and the person says they came into my house and they stole this item and they've now got it in their house. And here's the proof because I filmed them walking out of my house with it. And now you can see it in their house. And then the judge says, well, what's your defense? And he says, well, it's simple. I legistified it. And of course, the judge is going to say, what are you talking about? Yeah, so basically, legistifying is when you pick up something that doesn't belong to you and you permanently relocate it in a position that you want to have it. And the other person can't stop you from doing that because it's legistifying it. And of course, and this is, I mean, this sounds just mental, me saying this, but this is what interpolation is. It's just a word. It's just a word, it doesn't mean anything. Violent behaviour, theft, you know, fraud, um, all these different crimes you can have, you can give them different names and then the punishment doesn't apply anymore because you've called it a different thing. This is what it boils down to, is that this process that is being carried out is only being carried out because they can't get the permission of the owner and if they want to get the permission of the owner, they don't want to pay them for it or they don't want to pay however much it might cost. So in any other walk of life, you know, if you go into a shop and you say, right, I want you to give me that for free. The shop owner says no. So that's the first point. Your know, copyright owner says no. And they say, OK, well, how much does that cost? And they say, well, it's £2.99. And they say, that's too expensive. I'm not paying £2.99. But they take it anyway. And the shop owner says, that's that's mine. That's my property. I've paid for that and I'm selling it. There's a price to it. If you want it, you pay the price. If you don't, you leave without it. That's how it works. That's how everything works in this world. It, we all have to follow the laws of society. You know, uh, and but this is obviously something that they're trying to come in and say, oh, no, but no, we can do it. But um, we yeah, it's interpolation. So, you know, deal with it anyway. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you now know what interpolation is. So what they're trying to say it is, is something that doesn't exist. Uh, but anyway, yeah, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock.